Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going through UFC Saudi Arabia for Saturday. Please uh, note that it is a 12 noon uh, start time, which is actually very, very convenient for those of us who don't like to ruin our Saturday nights. Um, and more to the point, for those that don't want to stay up till two in the morning watching the main event. So this is good for those people. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of shuffling with the fight card and it's been hard to kind of keep pace with all the different fighters pulling out and the new money lines that came up or whatever. But I think we're almost at a point where we can analyze this fight, these fights from a DFS perspective. And again, this is uh, the first of two DFS videos. One in this one, where we're going to be going over the best plays uh, given their salaries and maybe projected ownership and with upside and things like that. Then we're going to do a betting breakdown tomorrow where we're very contrarian and just have a lot of fun with that. And then either first thing Saturday morning or hopefully later Friday night um, because of the early start time Saturday, we're going to do a lineup construction video where all we focus in on is how to attack the the, the MMA throwdown, the, uh, the $100,000 for first um, um, contest. And that's a lot of fun. It lets us dive and in, get into the weeds as far as Saberson goes and different contests and settings and salary restraints and things like that. But while we're not exactly ready to handle all these fights, we're close enough. There's only one fighter who's left to be added to the roster here um, and probably going to end up not playing him anyway. And we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so first, let's just go right from the bottom. So the first fight of the night, we have Chang Ho Lee versus um, Xiao Long. And on the surface, it looks like a very even fight. You, know, you have Xiao Long is 8,300 versus Chris Lee. Chris Lee. Uh, Chow, uh, Chow Lee's, uh, Chang Ho Lee's 7,900. And you look at the... Um, what you call it? You look at the money line here, and it's pretty much a pick em. So as far as money line value goes, I mean, actually, it's a little bit of money line value in, Ch in Chang Li. And in addition to that, Chang Li has this incredible amount of, of, of wrestling upside in his victories. Um, as, as, you'll, as, as you will see, if you look at some of his previous fights, I mean, he can get fighters to the ground and then unleash a lot of ground and pound if things go his way. Um, now, that doesn't necessarily mean that things are going to go his way. But remember, for DFS, we're not too concerned about that, about whether something is going to happen, right? We're always, we're just concerned about what happens when it does, uh, especially considering this is a pick and fight. So the idea is that a good amount of Chang Ho Lee's victories come with it, come with them, a good amount of takedowns, which is going to score extremely well. So given the combination of his, of his strong money line relative to his salary, and his incredible amount of takedown upside. And this is an ex you know, extremely strong play right out of the gate. Um, and again, we're not worried too much about his inside the distance line because we're really playing him for his takedowns. But even so, his inside the distance line isn't, isn't atrocious. Uh, Chao Long's atro uh, inside the distance line is atrocious. So the only reason you want to play him is if we think that Chang Ho Lee is going to be extremely popular, which he might be, actually. Um, but... Aside from that, I can't find any reason to play the other side of this. So for me, Chang Ho Lee looks like extremely strong play right out of the gate. All right, so we have, and you're going to forgive me for all the pronunciations, we have Gadshiloff against Ribeiro. 9,300 versus 6,900. So what we're going to expect to see when we look at the metrics is, well, we hope he's at least a minus 400 favorite for openers. And also, we're expecting an inside the distance line of about. Let me close this. Sorry. Sorry. We're expecting an inside the distance line of at least, you know, minus one twenty. I would say even more. I mean, considering his, it's not exactly Mister Takedown, you know, so. Uh, it's going to be tough for him to pay off this price. Let's see what his, his metrics look like, though. Um, let's see. Um, 
inside the distance. Oh, wow. Minus 250. Um, so maybe it's not so difficult for him to pay this off. Well, let's look into this a little bit more. Let's take a look at his round one chances. Round one implied by Vegas. Wow, minus 125. I mean, that looks like kind of the nuts, right? I mean, when do you see that? And especially an 11 fight card. I mean, how, how popular is this guy going to be? An 11 fight card? Well, the most popular fighter we're going to get to a little bit, but I mean, right off the bat, you play Lee and you play play this dude. But this is this guy's metrics are insane. I, mean, I hadn't I don't almost ever see that. Like literally favored to get him out of there in the first round. And with an eleven an eleven fight card, uh, it's gonna be difficult to pass up. I mean, he's gotta be. Hope he won't be the most popular fighter because we'll get to the most popular one probably pretty soon, but he's gotta be close. And probably for good reason. I mean, those metrics are, are very difficult to, to argue with. All right, Gafferov versus uh, <laughs> Mr. Perfect, Kian Kokan. 8,500 versus 7,900. Is that what this is? Um, 85, no, 83. Yeah, 85 versus 77. And... I guess the money line is pretty accurate. So we'll take a look at the inside the distance lines here. Gafarov inside is plus 245. That's really poor. Um, and Hiro Kang plus 350. That's pretty poor also. So th this this fight looks to me to be somewhat of a fade. Um, so let's not put anybody from this fight into our core or recommended plays or whatever you want to call them at, on a Thursday. Right, um, Renat Fakhradinov versus Nicholas Dalby. Another widely lined fight here, according to DraftKings, ninety two hundred versus seven k. So again, you know, we he's got a he's got to put together a good combination of inside the distance line and or or preferably and takedown upside. And the good thing is he does have a lot of takedown upside. Um, Fakhradinov. Let's look at his inside the distance line though. Inside the distance is plus 180 or so. And that's actually extremely poor for his price. So you're really going to be relying on just a whole bunch of takedowns from him um, to get there. And, and yeah, it's possible. But, you know, I don't regard him as, as good of a play as, say, um, as the other guy we mentioned earlier with the, the 9,300 guy, Garcia, whatever his name was. But I guess there are variations where he gets like a whole bunch of takedowns. So like something like seven takedowns against Brian Battle. Nikolaitis, he's terrible though. I mean, I, I don't know about this. The thing is, is that he's got 130 fantasy points, three straight, two straight uh, fights. One of them, a, a sub... In, and got the quality win bonus. Oh my God, that's, that doesn't happen all too often. So, yeah, I, I think people are going to see this and they're going to hope you get a, a situation like this, like the Brian Battle one, like seven takedowns at 14 minutes of control time. How do you even do that? But I'll say this if this is in, in, in the bingo card, uh, I guess you have to respect this. So let, let's let's put him in. What about Dolby? Um, all right, let's take a look at him. I mean, the other thing is I, what I forgot to do. I mean, I I, I I didn't really talk about Ribeiro too much, right? When I talked about uh, how great of a play the other guy was, and it, it's worth mentioning, even though this is not the line of construction video. Now, if the other guy is going to be like extremely popular, then Ribeiro might be a decent leverage play. I mean, it's inside the distance line, only plus 400. doesn't really win the fight all too often. But you definitely get some leverage playing him. And likewise, on the Dolby side, even though I bet you Dolby's inside the distance line is, doesn't really exist here, yeah, like plus 1,000, is it enough to just get some leverage against you know one of the 
I guess he's got to be one of the more popular fighters if he has 130 point upside in two of his last three fights. So, um, if you get even a win at all, you get a lot of leverage there. So, I guess Dolby's kind of a punt, but it's definitely not one of my favorites. All right, Nazra Hatbaras versus Jared Gordon. I can't imagine this being playable, this fight, but we'll take a look. So he's minus 230, or Hackbrass minus 230, 240 against Jared Gooden. And as far as the salaries go, it's probably what you're about to see. As a matter of fact, you could say that Gordon is a little underpriced on DraftKings at 7,200, given his win odds, plus 195, but not exceedingly so. But the thing is, this fight really doesn't rate to finish. I mean, the Hackbrass at 9K. He's like plus 175 inside the distance with no takedown upside. That's an extremely poor play. Gordon has no inside the distance line to speak of. You could argue that he might have some takedown upside, I suppose. Um, so I guess that puts him sort of in play as a punt. But really, this fight is is probably going to be probably going to be a fade. Mm -hmm. Muhammad Nayama versus uh, Lima. So it's an 8,300, 7,900 fight. Okay? And here you have a very interesting situation where you have um, two different fights with the same salaries, which you really don't see. The Nayama of Lima fight is the exact same as the long Lee fight. Um, and the other thing that's interesting about it, well, it's, it's flip-flop, but, but one of the fighters has an extremely amount of, of takedown upside here. And that would be Namov. Namov could really do, can really power wrestle. He does, you know, run the risk of running out of gas. But Lima is the one that's taking this fight on short notice. So, so I, I don't know how much of a cardio edge Lima could have in that construct. So, I mean, Namov, I mean, I don't even care what his inside the distance line is, even if it's remotely reasonable. I mean, it's got to be a strong play here. Um, Name of inside plus one, not 190. That's like pretty good for this price anyway. Plus the takedowns. I guess the only thing going against him is it's a pick em line and he's priced a little bit healthy. You know, he's priced maybe to be a little bit of a favorite, but I don't care. This is, you play guys like Lee and, and name off with the takedown upside. And this you're you're, you're kind of, you're kind of off to the races here. Now, again, because I imagine name is going to look really, really good that Lima is going to have some leverage here. But then again, like Lima is the one with the better money line uh, edge, right? I pick him and he's 400 cheaper. May, may, is it possible the name of ownership remains in check here? I don't know. We'll see, but he's definitely an elite play um, to say the least. All right, moving on. We have, we did Jared Gordon versus Hackbrass. We did Dalby. Okay, Volkan Uzdemir versus Johnny Walker. I know I'm really not supposed to put my own takes on the fights in this because we're supposed to rely on the odds, but I'll, I'll give you a take anyway. But let's just first look at the at, at the, the numbers. So Johnny Walker, 8,200 versus 8K. So it's it's one of those, those really tightly lined fights that you got to respect, even if there was no inside the distance line to speak of on either of them just because it makes the rest of your lineups just flow much easier. But then when you look at the inside the distance line, it's kind of crazy. You have, I mean, the fight doesn't, it, it's minus, it's it's like minus 130 to go under one and a half. That's, that's the odds you get or whatever. Um, actually, it's the opposite, but even still, let's look at some of these inside the distance line. You have Walker and Ozdemir both at plus 170. Those are really, really good inside the distance line for this price. And, and so you're going to have to respect this. I mean, almost half the time, not quite. But yeah, I mean, half the time, somebody in here is finishing at a good price tag for an 11 fight card. So uh, I imagine this fight's going to be popular. People are going to play both sides of this. I, I would just like to say that... Um, my opinion is is this line is a little bit bad for whatever that's worth. I, I think that 
this does not finish as often as people think it might. I think that Johnny Walker has this reputation from the past for being, you know, kill or be killed or whatever. But he's been much slower. I mean, in his in his most recent performances, I think. Like the Anthony Smith one is is the one that I, I think about. I mean, he didn't he didn't do anything stupid. He just kept he kept leg kicking him, kept him at range, and just kind of won easily. Um, and I think that that's kind of what we're gonna get. And, and very similar with Ozdemir. He Yes, he did have, I think, one finish recently that was pretty quick, but he's kind of low volume. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I think this I think this fight goes over. What can I tell you? So if you think the fight goes over, more often that the line is 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 indicating, then you're probably supposed to get less of these guys. So if I were gonna stand by my take, whatever that's worth, probably not much, um, I would say to fade this fight to some degree. But if we again, if we respect the metrics, these are good prices. So let's let's leave them in for now. All right. Um, okay. So we have what one, two, three, four more fights, something like that. Three more fights. So this next one is kind of like the 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 shit show. Um, now again, I'm very happy they found him a replacement opponent. Um, uh, Shara Magomedov was against somebody else. He was going to look like an okay play anyway, but his opponent pulled out and they replaced him with Anton Tricoli. And so unfortunately, because the salaries get locked in before the replacement, you know, the salaries get locked in based on the original starting roster, even if the, the, the fights change, you have to keep his salary the same. So now he's 8,800, but his new opponent is much worse to the point where he's a minus 550 favorite. Um, now, the the inside the distance line isn't out yet, but I'm, I'm going to imagine because the the over, the under one and a half is minus 140, that his inside the distance line is at least minus 110, you know, may, maybe, maybe more. And maybe he'll have a good inside the distance line even in the first round. So uh, this is kind of a lock. Now, again, when I say lock, it doesn't, it's hard to explain, but it doesn't mean he's going to win. It doesn't mean it's going to make the optimal or whatever, but it's like a theoretical lock. You have, you have a guy who should be priced at 9,400 who's 8,800, you know, and that's it. Now it could be worse, right? So sometimes you had guys that were going to be small underdogs, 7,800, that then all of a sudden became minus 500 favorites. So it's not that bad, but it's pretty bad. Um, so he is definitely the first guy you want to put in your cash lineups. Um, and uh, again, the only reason you wouldn't play him is for ownership. Chakali, he just doesn't win the fight often enough for me to consider him, so we'll leave him alone. Kevin Gastelum versus uh, Daniel Rodriguez. I'll tell you, that Gastelum at eighty nine hundred. It's it's he's going to need a very similar inside the distance line to some of these other guys, and I just don't think he's going to have it here. I mean, let's look at it. Gastelum's inside the distance line is 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 plus two twenty five. That's atrocious. The only way you could even begin to talk me into playing him in DFS is if you were going to assure me he was going to going to wrestle. And then even that, you just can't guarantee anything that it's going to work. So, uh, this, this fight's probably a fade. I mean, you know, if you if you get to him, it'll probably be in one fifty match stuff because he listen he does have some takedown upside if in fact he opts to go that route. But who says he even opts to go that route anyway? Uh, Daniel Rodriguez, just uh, his inside the distance line is poor, plus like 800, no reason to play him. There's no leverage against Gastelum because Gastelum is not going to be owned as well. So fight's probably a pass with maybe a little bit of Gastelum. All right, Sergey Pavlovich versus Alexander Volkov. So there's a little bit of narrative going on in this fight. Well, with some facts is that are that – these guys train together like a lot. So the narrative is that when they actually get into the ring, it might not be quite as violent. Um, I, 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 I don't know about that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just say that. I mean, let's say this Pavlovich is coming off of a, of, of a, of a, uh, of a performance where it really got brought, brought back to earth. I mean, he was killing everybody and he got dusted. Okay. I, by uh by Volkov. And this is his fight, first fight back from that. 
Um, there's no way that he is letting Volkov off easy if he can get him out of there. There's no way. So I'm not too worried about the sparring business. What I will say, though, is that Volkov, from a, you know, he has a lot of, of experience, is that I, I, I've a feeling that I have a feeling he at least learned something more about Pavlovich from this experience. So, uh, but again, all this is probably factored into the lot. I would imagine. Well, let's take a look at the inside of distance line. Let's just make this easy. So Pavlovich is probably going to be, yeah, he, Pavlovich is minus one, 150 inside the distance. I mean, yeah, I mean, minus 150 inside the distance. And he's probably round one, probably pick him. Let's see. Pavlovich round one plus 125. I mean, at his price of 8,700, that's even, that's probably going to be even better than Magomedov here. Um, so this is a kind of an elite play. And because this is an elite play, all we need is for Volkov on the other side to be reasonable. And then he becomes an extremely elite play. And when you look at it, Volkov inside, Plus 340. That's not great, I have to say. Oh, I was hoping to get a little bit better. He has some takedowns, though. So, am I going to do this? No, no takedowns either. How is he going to win? I mean, I know how he can win. I mean, he can just. How does he? Got to survive the first round and then outstrike him? I guess there's enough leverage against Pavlovich where you make Volkov playable. So we'll leave it at that. He's not an elite player or anything like that, but because of the how awesome Pavlovich looks, uh, you, you got to have to, you have to play some Volkov for leverage. All right. So last fight we have Robert Whitaker versus Ikram Ali Skaroff. Now we'll talk about this in in a in the betting breakdown but for a fight which is 8400 7800 you are getting just a, a swarm of recommendations on the Robert Whitaker side. Um and it's just such an easy recommendation to make. You know it's like Ali Skaroff was supposed to fight Tricoli so now he's fighting Whitaker so it's a step up in competition. Yeah, I guess you know I mean? not, but not really, right? You never actually fought him. And is that really what you mean by a step up in competition? The fact that you were going to fight somebody, you didn't fight him, and now you're fighting somebody else? I don't think that's the way it works. And then all you're hearing is just that Robert Whitaker just has, you know, the vet lesson and the, the just just too much better on the feed and the lack of competition for from Elias Skarov. And, and the, the fact is, I mean, I was scared of him. It's only like plus 140. I don't even understand this. I mean, like, when they're talking about the fight, it's like Whitaker should be minus 500. So I, I won't talk. We're, de we're definitely betting Alice Scarab when we talk about the betting, just be just to be contrarian here. This is the overwhelming love for Whitaker in the spot is completely ridiculous. Um, and as a matter of fact, I mean, when it comes to DraftKings, it's 8,400, 7,800. Yes, it's a five round fight. Um, but how exactly? I mean, I know he's at. How exactly is Robert Whitaker going to cover this incredible ownership he's going to have? Um, I mean, his inside the distance line is plus 175. Big deal. Okay. I mean, as a matter of fact, I mean, Alice Carroll's got a better inside the distance line, right? Because that's what they're saying that if, as long as Whitaker survives the first round or two, then he's kind of off to the races here. But off to the races for what? To win a decision? And, and score how much? 95? It's not like he's going to put up an incredible volume. Right? He's going to keep him at bay and just do whatever. I mean, look at these fantasy points. See, this, this, this is what I'm afraid of. That. Or, or okay, even this over another two rounds. Like, this doesn't exist. The four takedown in, in, in a five-round fight doesn't exist in this spot. Cannoneer, 72. Till in a five-round fight with two takedowns, 88. This guy just doesn't score. So I, I'm not saying I'm going to X him out, 
but I'll say this, that if, if Saber said, if I run my builds and they give, and they give me zero of him, I will be totally okay. With okay. Um, so for me, it's either Ali Oscaro or nothing as far as the main event. That's, that's the way it's got to be. To that point, I mean, if you could play Ali Oscaro off and, and Lee to get your, your, your life started, then your lineups build extremely easily. Uh, not to say to actually play this, but all right. So that's going to do it. Uh, tomorrow we're going to do a betting breakdown. And the only thing I can promise you is we're probably is that we're playing Elias Scarrow. Aside from that, uh, we're going to do a lineup construction video either later tomorrow night or first thing Saturday morning where we figure out how to win the hundred K. And uh, that's pretty much it. Good luck, everybody.